Hi, Ray Pointer here with another AI and ChatGPT video. So what we're going to look at today is what you can do if you start accessing the API rather than just the web interface. So when we think about ChatGPT, really there are three ways that people are using it. Um, the web interface, fantastic. Lots and lots of people are doing that. Works really well. Um, a few of us are using it on our phone. It's really handy. Um, it's easy to use voice, easy to integrate uh, camera, lots of benefits. But if you want to go a bit deeper into it, if you want to automate tasks, then really you need to be using the API, which has got a different cost model. It's more powerful. It gives you more alternatives. So how do you access the API? Well, you've got to create a paid ChatGPT account with some credits. Um, you've got to get your API key from them as well. Um, write a program so that you pass the prompt to ChatGPT and that program will read the answer back. So how do you start doing that? Well, there are two alternatives. Um, the first is you can ask ChatGPT and I'm going to show you what happens when you do that. Or the final one, and I'll talk about this more on the, the last part of the video. Um, we've got a course coming up later on in August where we will talk you through and we will give you the basic code that you need to use to be able to start doing this. So if you go to ChatGPT and you type in the prompt, how do I write a Google app script to call the ChatGPT API? it will give you this back. It tells you about opening an open AI account to get your API key. Um, open the Google Sheets to be able to do that, to write your script, and it's going to give you the script. You can ask it more and more questions to get more and more clarity. Um, I'm picking Google Apps and Google Sheet because it's all free and it's really straightforward. You could be using um, a whole variety of languages. You can use C, you can use Python, whatever it is that you want to use. An example of using the ChatGPT API. Um, I'm going to do it in Google Sheets because Google Sheets is free and it's widely available. And I've written a routine in Google Apps Script which calls the ChatGPT. And so I'm in my Sheets and I can simply call that function ChatGPT I'm going to type in what are the first five letters of the alphabet and then when I'm going to hit return it loads up the answer and it gives us the answer back. So really that's very much like using the web interface but now I can do it over and over again in my Google Sheet um, just to get a better feeling for what's going on. Another way we could do that is we could put the question into one cell and then I'm going to call my function that I've written in Google Apps Script, my ChatGPT function, and ask it to read the question in the previous cell. So I click on it, tell that it's in A6, I hit return, it loads that through, and it's going to give me an answer. OK, it's not formatted very well, so let's tidy that up just a little bit. Now, because it's reading that question, I don't have to retype all that long stuff that's in the B column. I could type a new question into A and get an answer. So here's more of a market research question. If I've got a sample size of, let's say, a thousand people, and it's a market research type of study, Perhaps I want to know about the error margin, the degree of confidence that I should have in that data. So my spelling is not always great. So there is the question. Again, it reads the question and it gives me an answer. And the previous answer was all about primary colours. This time it's given me... Uh, it's given me how it worked out the answer as well as the answer. So what I can do is I can go back and I can modify the question. Just give me the answer. Not the explanation. Okay. 
and now it gives me just the answer. So that's created a little bit of a sandbox that I could play with, try different things. I can change the model with this function that I've used. But here is some real data. It's from Kaggle and their reviews of people who have visited Disney Park. Um, they're all in Hong Kong. So now I put in the answer to that data in there. And I'm going to put in part of the question that I'm going to want to use, because now I want to be able to fill this down and use it for lots of cells. So we ask visitors to Disney and then I'm going to put in an ampersand so I can get the original question. I need to put some dollars on that because I always want it to be A9. That makes this an absolute reference. And then I'm going to add some more to the question. And their answer was, put in a quote and an ampersand, and now I'm going to look at um, A10, which is the first of the answers that we were supplied with. So I've now got the original question, I've got the original answer. And now I've got the task. Please summarize their answer in five words. This task could have been give me sentiment analysis. This task could be convert the language. It could be summarize it. It could be look for personally identifiable data. I could use this sort of approach in lots and lots of ways to check out the data. So now, just like the earlier example, I've got a question that I can ask as my prompt. And the prompt is going to give me the answer. So let's make a little bit of space ready. So this again just becomes equals chat GPT, the function I've written put in that new question text I've created. It has a think. Familiar layout, enjoyable ride experience. And of course, I can now fill down for column B and for column C and to do this for more and more data. And it's giving me um, the different bits of feedback as we're going through. So that one is mixed feelings about Disney. Disney magic for little ones. So it's now processing more and more data for me, giving me um, the output that I want. Great place, daughter loved it. Lots and lots of five word summaries. I can then extend exactly the same logic um, and ask it to generate the sentiment. And so ChatGPT, this time I'm gonna put the the whole instruction inside the call. Um, I could use the previous method of doing columns for the question and then columns for the answer, but I've not done that this time. We've gone straight to typing it in. So I'm going to ask it to, to tell me if those five words in the previous cell is a positive, negative, or neutral comment. And again, I really just want a one word answer. So I modify that instruction, just give me the one word answer. It says it's positive. Just going to tidy that up a little bit. And we can fill that down and find out for all the data cells whether the comment 
based on the five words was positive or negative or neutral. I could also have done it on the original statement, of course. Um, it isn't always super fast. And of course, every time you do this, you are spending some money, but that's something we can look at another time. Well, I hope you found that example of how we can use ChatGPT um, and the API from it to automate tasks, to create a sandbox, to start looking at things. There are many, many more things you can do once you get past that basic starting point. So just to remind you, how do you get to the first starting point? You can ask ChatGPT, how do I do this? And I would recommend using Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. You can do it um, with Visual Basic for applications uh, for Excel if you're using a Windows machine. If you're using a Mac, it's possible, but it is a lot harder because fewer, the, fewer of those things are there. So I would say if you're really just getting started and you're not already using Python or you're not already using R or something like that, use Google Apps Script, use Google Sheets. Or, and this is what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, Will Pointer and I are running a course on the 28th of August, 2024. It's a 90-minute course along with 30 minutes of Q&A. Before you get the course, you'll also get a worksheet that will sh tell you how to create your account. So you're going to be able to follow along with us. The worksheet's got a whole set of tasks to do. Um, if you go to the new MR website, you can find out more about this course by going to our events or by going specifically to this. Remember, if you have found this video useful, please subscribe to our channel. We're putting out lots and lots of videos on the topic of how to use artificial intelligence, what artificial intelligence means, how to use ChatGPT, how to use programming and these sort of topics. Thank you so much.